Sarah Simon is the library director. Uh, she's with us tonight, uh, helping out. Uh, what we're going to be doing tonight uh, is we're going to uh, have Sarah do a little presentation on some of the things that libraries are starting to do that you might not have thought about. Uh, libraries are beginning to change a little bit. And then I'm going to ask you to do some work for us. Uh, we're going to have uh, four different questions that are on flip charts up on the wall, and I want you to take a marker and begin to tell us what you think in response to the questions. What do you value about the branch? What would you think would improve this branch or make it a better place for you? Uh, how do you see the branch contributing to the educational opportunities in the community? Uh, and then the last one is, what do you think this branch is going to be offering and what is it going to look like 10 to 20 years into the future? Because that's the planning cycle that we need to be in uh, in order to be eligible for uh, some state grant funds to support um, library construction. Uh, the project, uh, as I mentioned, it's the Coolidge Corner Bridge Library Building Program. We started uh, in January. The trustees have begun this process of evaluating the branch and looking uh, at options for improvements to it. Uh, so this is very much about making the branch even better than it is. Um, I know it's very special in the community. Uh, and as part of that, we've got some focus groups we're doing. We're having these open community meetings, such as we're doing a survey. If you haven't uh, discovered the survey, I hope you'll take time to do it. It's available right off the library's website. Uh, the actual address is also here if you want to drop that down. Uh, and we have an email that you can send suggestions or comments to um, if you think of something after the fact. Uh, so those are all going to be available to you. Uh, and One of the things that's very important in life 
This one is a is a, a, a larger format 3D scanner. So say you want your very own library director doll, you can scan me out in front of it, and it will 3D scan me, and you can send that data off to a 3D printer and make your own little 12-inch replica of me. <laughs> I strongly suggest it. So. Um, Wayfinding. This is one of our oldest functions, right? Where are we going? How do you get there? What What are you looking for, and where is it? Um, this is changing dramatically. Uh, we're hoping to sort of do away with the once and for all the age of the handwritten magic marker signs about what we have here in the library. And some of the options are um, kiosks like this, where you can search for collections or particular kinds of spaces, restrooms or art exhibits. Um, here's another one. This one's in Darien, Connecticut. It's difficult to see in the graphic, I know, but this is a t touch screen tabletop that you can um, expand out the rooms you want to go to and find out what's in those rooms and really um, navigate easily through the library. Good old fashioned signage done in a more modern way. Um, this is a, I thought, very pretty and innovative way of using uh, the dead space of a corner in the hallway to show and then they color coded all the different areas. So like this one says local studies and family history at meeting rooms six, seven, and eight. Um, there are also restrooms down there and it's accessible and that's all very bright and graphic and easy to understand. Um, these kinds of kiosks at the end of the stack. So if you're off on the stacks looking for a book and you decide, wow, oh, I really, I, this book was great and I really want to read other books by the software. I wonder if they have that author's her first book. You can go to the end and look it up and if it's not something we own or on the shelf, you can place your book right there. So it'll help you find your way through the library in a, a more fluid manner rather than having to run around to different you know, stationary kiosks. Um, programming and collections are really, really changing in libraries. It's not just story time and craft hour here anymore. Um, you probably all recognize this. It's a card catalog. We used to have those here. That's how you found your books. Well, this one's holding seeds. Lots of libraries around the country and actually around the world are offering seed libraries. The way they work is you come in and you take heirloom seeds out of the library the same way you would a book. You go home and grow the tomatoes and you save some of the seeds and you return those seeds. Way of preserving our um, non GMO stock of fruits and vegetables. So it's a very exciting, innovative, and sometimes controversial thing that public libraries are doing. Can anyone tell what those are from the uh, picture? What was the question? Can you tell what's in this picture? No, 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 the visual is good, but I'm a little, I'm a little trouble with the audio. Okay. That's right, that's a cake pan library. So you can go in and you know, for that one year that your child or grandchild or friend really wants a Cookie Monster cake, you can go borrow the Cookie Monster cake pan and not then have to own the Cookie Monster cake pan. So it's very cool, there are a lot of libraries in Massachusetts doing this. Here's Elmo, this is a kitty cat, a baseball mitt, um, an electric guitar, so that's kind of a fun thing. Um, and in keeping with that idea of providing people with things that they don't necessarily need to use a lot or have the room to store. Uh, this is a kitchen library. So I told the story earlier today that my daughter has decided that she only wants to consume smoothies. Well, we don't have a blender because nobody in the house consumes smoothies and the blender we got is a wedding gift that's destroyed at a margarita making party. So we, I don't want to go spend $150 on a blender for my 12 year old unless she's going to stick with it. So I could go check the blender out of the library and see if Miss Lila wants to stick with her smoothie binge or not. Um, there's all kinds of things on these shelves. There's bread makers and um, vegetable dehydrators and stand mixers and ice cream makers. Yeah, for how long would you, you say you can take it out? Yeah. Like a day, a week? No, it would probably be a long period, like a week or two. Oh, okay, so yeah. maybe for a long period. I mean, we would, obviously, you know, as we innovate, we'll decide on each collection. This is the Oakland Public Library Tool Library. So for people who can't afford their own tools, don't have space to store them in their apartments or condos, you can go check out any tools you need to do some light construction, um, light gardening, landscaping, and you just check these things out from the library and then you return them when you're done. We have a lot of art exhibits here at the public libraries of Brookline. Um, one of the ways that people are augmenting their exhibits now, um, excuse me, is with through these digital support methods. So you see our little display cases here in the middle and on either side, you can program, uh, a, you can do interactive or non-interactive history. This one here is a civil rights movement, but right now in the main children's room, we have a spectacular display of a child's dinosaur, toy dinosaur collection. So we could augment that collection by putting up all kinds of information about dinosaurs on either side. The library is increasingly used as a place for people to meet and do exercise. Yoga is very popular 
next day. A lot of digital, uh, but books will not disappear. Uh, literacy across all populations. I want the library to be a place families look for in deciding where to live. Valued place of learning for all. Intergenerational connections, which improve the quality of life. The library serves as a free indoor community gathering and learning space with classes, um, invited speakers, book readings, and more inviting rooms and spaces for meetings and gathering and conversing. Multi-ethnic, multicultural, partially diverse needs, and an indoor play, reading, art, maker space for kids. So, some good things there. So, thank you. That's great. Um, so what happens next with this is I take all of this information and I put it into a chart <laughs> by question, just the way you wrote it. And it becomes part of the um, information that we use to help frame what the library might look like uh, as part of this plan. Uh, and at some point, probably later in the spring, um, this will all start to move forward as a full document um, and into its next phases. Uh, but if you have suggestions, you think of something after tonight, uh, you know, Sarah had given you the information on the library's website. Uh, I'm sure you could just drop her a note in the mail. Or, yeah, that's an easier way to get something to her um, and to add to it. Yes? Do you guys think about kind of like staged um, changes? You know, like I can imagine some changes like hours or uh, you know, like if you want new cake borrowing thing, like we do that this year, whereas if you want to like change the space itself, that's probably like a multi-year thing. Did you, did well, we were, we were just talking in between the, the folks who have been this meeting about um, the fact that some of the things that we've seen in some of the groups we've had so far are things that could be implemented, you know, obviously because we're fundraising and we're trying to get a grant and then we're going to ask the town for money and we want to make sure we aren't putting a lot of you know, serious money into this building right now because who knows what's going to happen with it. So, um, but there are things like you said, like the hours I saw up here, someone suggested we open the vestibule doors early on cold days, um, things like that, and those are totally practical. Um, and then I just have to say, I, I should probably, this isn't probably the right place, but we are constantly advocating for a full time custodian here at the branch. So, I think you would like to call your town meeting members and say, I just saw a lot of comments about the cleanliness of the branch, and I, I just want all of we're aware, and I agree, um, but we have a part, a very part-time custodian is the only thing we have funded here, so, um, so anyway, that's my little pitch for library <laughs> funding, but yeah, absolutely, I, we are absolutely going to consider that. Um, I think I've already, um, there's a couple things that I've already planned on implementing here, and actually at other locations to do around signage and, uh, and uh, neatness, and uh, we're implementing a leading project right now, so we're hoping to see some more sort of housekeeping tidy things. So what we can do, what we can do, we will do. So, and then as we move forward, we'll be looking at the bigger picture. If I may, I'd like to expand on one and not to a statement that I made there. Okay. okay. And that is, emphasizing early American literature in this country from, from, the, from the beginning. I grew up, I grew up in the Depression before the Depression, before the Second World War, and you know the funny thing was, most of the world knew of George Washington and Jefferson and what they stood for and what this country stood for. Today, you can ask people educated even here in this country, and the only people they know are the most prominent who want our best citizens. So I just wanted to make that it's not as it's not you as, as it seems. It's important because we have such a, a, a diversified community tonight. Thank okay. you. Okay. Any other questions or yes? Just wanted to focus when you were talking about three-dimensional computers, which I think are great. But one of the uh, complaints that I've heard here is, is, is we don't even have a color printer and we don't have enough copiers. And I didn't put those things down, but uh, right now, right here. Uh, we can see that only one copier which is attached to the printer. If we can get a second or a third copier, that would be great. And somewhere there were a color copier that even 75 cents a page would be a great thing. I'm glad you brought that up because those are actually all initiatives that are in progress right now. So we are being very careful to make sure that we are caught up before we leave ahead. There are some
that's that can't be skipped. And like having the color of access to a scanner, yeah. a color printer is definitely one. You get a three dimensional printer and I want those things. Yeah. <laughs>
flexible. Uh, that it's really very important that we build a building or renovate a building that doesn't lock us in to any particular use or a room that is specific for something um, to the degree that it is possible. And that's a little um, contra it. to the but study. Can you, I mean, you put flexible. So there it is. Well, a flexible room. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Um, you know, earlier today, one of the uh, comments that was made, um, I'm not sure which category it was in, was that one of the things that actually um, works in for this branch is that there are relatively few walls. Now that's, it, it means the noise moves around the building, but it, when you come in, it's got sort of openness to it because it doesn't have a lot of small rooms and fixed walls. Um, and that was something that people appreciated. And that is certainly something that drivers are trending towards in terms of space that is flexible and that the fixtures, furniture and fixtures are flexible. Uh, so you may or may not have noticed in the children's room that had a little bit of a remodeling fairly recently, there are book stacks in there that are on big casters. And that means they can be moved out of the way and you can create more space to do a children's little story time in there if you want to or some other activity. And that is a trend um, that has really taken off because libraries have discovered they build something and the change in particularly technology and the way the community uses the facility have begun to evolve faster uh, and that the building hasn't been able to keep up with it. Um, now one of, the, one of the challenges in this building uh, is access to power. Uh, it's of that vintage. Um, so you'll see, uh, particularly in the original section of the building, uh, where power's been brought down on the building support um, pillars. Uh, it's, you know, it's come up from under the floor. It's in a variety of places. Uh, and there are sections where there just isn't power. And so any building that was built before about 1975, 1980, it's a real challenge um, to get power in often. Uh, in the children's section, I pass by there every day, coming I mean, up. And uh, I'm a little aware that they have these little, these little coals, or whatever you call it. And uh, it was only several months ago. I noticed it for the first time I about it in all the headlights. Because when I saw them, I saw a, a little child already seated there, seated there. And her older brother, who could barely get into that place itself, would already get something, and they come back, and now, into that window, and it was like a little trauma in, in itself. Like, I was just not again. So, who created that? Uh, deserved an awful lot of props. Uh, well, so you can give all credit to the, that. Maybe it's my, pre mm -hmm. my predecessor did that renovation, and I think that those little windows are genius. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 We're hoping to get some new big stuffed animals for that room because the ones in there are getting a little ratty. So. Still looking. I know they are. <laughs>
raise money through, um, you know, when you bring your books or materials back late, you can throw money there. Um, the town office, we don't. Yeah, and not money, I should, you're right there, not money goes back to the general fund in yeah. the town. So the town does get some money back from us. We also um, rent out, if you're not, um, we have different scale of fees if you need to rent out the big hall at the main yeah, library or the small conference room or this room mm -hmm. um, for your own event, especially if you're a business or a, a, even a nonprofit. So that money also goes to the general fund. And, you know, we like to think that we see it come back around in the next cycle. So um, it's really important that that our supporters come. 